All right, people. Uh, today we move to a new chapter, chapter number seven, bond evaluation. Uh, this is right after chapter five, time value of money. I feel these uh, two chapters are so connected together uh, because uh, in this uh, new chapter, you need to rely on the time value of money solving technique to uh, get the value of bond. Chapter 6 will be addressed later. Uh, basically, if you read the textbook, it is a determinant of a bond yield to maturity or the required return for bond. And uh, I prefer to leave that part in uh, with the chapter 8 uh, when I address the financial markets, all kinds of financial securities, especially their risk and return characteristics. Okay, so if it's related about the return and the risk level, I prefer to put it in chapter 8, which is uh, after your midterm exam. Okay, back to this chapter. So what is a bond? Bond is a financial security issued by the firm um, or in a government uh, entity or uh, individual. Okay, it is a legally binding agreement between a borrower and a lender. If you issue a bond, you sell a bond, uh, and then you are a borrower, and whoever purchased the bond would be the lender. Okay, the buyer of the bond basically is a providing capital to the issuer of the bond. Okay, um, and uh, bond refers to long-term debt. It's not short-term. If it is short-term, it would be called notes. Okay, bond is long-term debt instrument in which a borrower agrees to make payments of principal and interest on a specific date to the holder of the bond. Okay, so it is a uh, written in black and white in contract uh, how the bond should be paid off okay and the bond could be issued by corporation state or government and if it's a stock it can only be issued by corporation only since uh, the issuer of the bond could be many uh, the bond market is definitely greater than the stock market okay so the uh, in the globe, there is uh, a $100 trillion bond market, and uh, the stock market is roughly 60% of that. And in the U.S., uh, you can see this uh, pie chart. Uh, most of the bond is issued by the U.S. Uh, federal government, okay, or the Department of the Treasury. Uh, this is uh, called a Treasury bond. Okay, that's uh, basically 30% of all bonds in the floating in the U.S. market. And then you have a corporate bond. Uh, issued by corporations like Boeing Company, uh, which is headquartered in Chicago. It is a big issuer of a bond. Actually, 90% of Boeing Company's assets is financed by corporate bond. Okay, and then you also have a uh, mortgage-related uh, bonds. So these uh, bonds are issued by financial institutions backed by mortgage uh, uh, loans. Okay, you can treat mortgage loans as assets for the bank because uh, you are supposed to get uh, uh, mortgage payments from the lender. So uh, whoever holds that uh, uh, mortgage securities is receiving cash flows, just like uh, you receive uh, coupon payments for your bond. All right, and then you have a municipal bond issued by state government or uh, county government. You have a money market bonds, agency securities, asset backed securities. Okay. And this is a, a, a very old uh, certificate of a corporate bond, all right? So what you see here is uh, $1,000 face value is lifted right here. And here you got a redemption date, okay? That's when you can redeem this uh, certificate for $1,000. It is due on May the 1st, 1895, okay? And uh, you also see a seven uh, being uh, written here. So seven is... Uh, 7% uh, coupon rate, and then you see these uh, little coupons, so 35, 35, 35. This must be a semi-annual coupon bond. Um, uh, it is, uh, uh, so 7% times 1,000 gives you 70 annual coupon payment, and uh, divided by two, okay, so for each semi-annual period, you receive $35 as a bond buyer. And this bond is actually uh, not issued by a corporation, uh, it's issued by state of California to finance the project of a Pacific Railroad construction. Okay, so uh, that's basically tells you the basic uh, financial inst uh, information about the bonds. So what you can see is the face value, which is always always a thousand dollars. It is the same case 150 years ago as it's now. 
You also have a coupon payment, which is paid periodically. Okay, and uh, you, on the bond, there is a coupon rate at an annual term. And uh, you also need to count the frequency of payments. The coupon could be made twice a year, four times a year, or even every month. Uh, so you, can, you need to calculate the periodical coupon payments in dollar terms. And you also have maturity date. Based on the maturity date uh, and the time you purchase the bond, which is also called a settlement date, okay, the period between the dates is a time to maturity. Okay? Uh, so the terms that are not in the contract, it does not tell you about the bond price. You see the face value is $1,000. That's uh, how much you get when you redeem the bond 20 years or 10 years later. But you don't see what's the current prevailing price in the market for buying the bond, okay? Or the fair value of the bond in the market. You also, uh, you, you, you do not see a required return either, all right? Uh, the annual required return is actually called yield to maturity, and you need to remember this name, yield to maturity. It is a required return for the bond or holding period return for the bond, or you can also use yield to maturity to discount all cash flows generated by the bond. All right, you don't know what is the, the return uh, per year the bond will give you. So these are two terms that they uh, determine one each other, okay? and you don't have a settlement date. The settlement date is when the bond is traded. Based on the settlement date, you can see the time to maturity. Okay, so the valuation of the bonds, just like any financial securities, the value of it equals to the present value of all the future expected cash flow generated from this security. Okay, I'm not sure why they call uh, bonds, stocks, uh, derivatives, or securities. They should actually be called insecurities because their price always keep changing and sometimes just plummet. All right. Uh, anyways, get back to our valuation process. You need to find all the coupons and also the face value, which is also called a par value, that is a thousand dollars. Okay, and discount all of them, just like here. You discount cash flow one with the interest rate. Okay, or the required return, okay, uh, raised to the power of one, uh, cash flow two, discount it, raised to the power of two, and so on and so forth until you reach the last uh, cash flow. Okay, as you can see that the interest rate you use here, uh, which is also the yield to maturity or the required return of the bond, uh, has an inverse relationship with the bond value. So when this uh, denominator goes up, then the value would go down. All right. So on the financial calculator, these are the uh, factors you should put. Future value is $1,000. Payment is your coupon payment per, per period, not per year necessarily. It's per period. And I is required to return. N is uh, years until maturity. Uh, I should say this is the period until maturity. Okay, you also have a bond price at the uh, present value. And of course, you have to uh, adjust your calculation based on the coupon payment frequency. If uh, the coupon is made twice a year, then you will need to uh, um, divide the annual required return by two uh, and multiply the uh, years by two. All right, here is one example. Uh, luckily, this is a, a annual coupon, okay, so the frequency is one. So this company issued a bond with 10 years to maturity, and uh, the uh, coupon is uh, $80, and the yield to maturity is uh, 8%. Um, you need to solve for the bond price. So the bond price is uh, $1,000, uh, and uh, that is uh, exactly the face value, which is also $1,000. So just remember this. When the yield to maturity or the required return or the discount rate is the same thing um, but different names, when this rate equals to the coupon rate, okay, coupon rate, then your uh, bond price equals to the par value or the face value, okay, okay, of $1,000. Uh, so um, if you want to put in a calculation, you can do this. Uh, you hit uh, apps, finance, okay, and time value money solving, all right, and then um, based on the given information, it is a 10-year bond, okay, and I is uh, 8%, 
and the present value is something you need to solve for. Payment is eighty dollar. Okay, future value is one thousand, and the payment is made at the end of each period. You move back to solve for the uh, present value. Um, you hit uh, alpha, enter. Okay, you see you get a one thousand dollars. All right, and the next exercise. So uh, one year later, the yield to maturity has changed to ten percent. So the required return is not 10% anymore. Uh, it's not 8% anymore. It's actually 10%. That's going to change the bond value. One thing is that you're going to use a different uh, interest rate. Okay, instead of 8, use a 10. And another thing is uh, the yield to maturity. The time to maturity has also shrinked from 10 years to 9 years as one year has just passed. Okay. So what's the new value? Um, you change i from 8 to 10. Okay and then you change uh, n from 10 to 9 and then the payment and the future value stay the same you would have a, a new uh, present value that equals to a negative uh, 884 I'm not going to show you the uh, calculator on my screen so you, but I do require you to verify this number at home so what happens is uh, the bond price was $1,000 a year ago but now it is 884 so what is the price change here is a one important formula that I require you guys to remember it, okay? Um, and this is a very basic financial formula to get a return or the price change or the percentage change of any security prices, okay? So it equals to the new price minus the old price divided by the old price or the later price minus the earlier price divided by the earlier price. In this particular case, that's uh, uh, the... Uh, that's the price one year after the insurance uh, minus the price at the insurance divided by the price at the insurance new minus old divided by the old so you would get a negative 15.18 uh, percent I ask you to verify this number uh, spend some moment and uh, uh, verify that number and this is a, a required skill for the class okay so what you see here is uh, when the uh, year goes uh, down and the, especially when the yield to maturity goes up, when interest rate goes up from 8 to 10, bond price drops. So you have a, a negative 15% decline of bond price. All right, the next question is to solve for the interest rate. In this whole chapter for bond, the interest rate is yield to maturity. Okay, that's yield to maturity. As I said, you're going to use this rate to uh, discount all the cash flows and uh, count it as the holding period return um, and also use it as a required return okay for the required return I think it's a little bit too early to explain it I prefer to leave it until chapter 8 after your first midterm exam actually the only midterm exam um, to uh, address the required return alright just for now just remember that's the interest rate that's the discount rate or compounding rate okay um, so you are selling for interest rate and uh, the tricky part is uh, the coupon is made semi-annually so you have to do a lot of an adjustment alright so what you see here is uh, if you lay out the valuation model the present value the worth of the bond today it equal to all the cash flows generated by the bond which is a forty five dollars each summer annual period that forty five come from nine percent times a thousand that's ninety dollar per year divided by two that's a forty five dollar per summer annual period okay forty five forty five all the way until you have a twenty forty fives uh, and then uh, at the end of uh, the holding period ten years after uh, you have one thousand dollars so you have a twenty seven annual periods in a, a ten year period um, and then the yield to maturity is an annual term. You have to divide it by two, okay, um, uh, to discount the uh, cash flow occurring on a semi annual basis. All right. So this is what you do. What you what you input on your calculator. So I highly recommend you to verify the number, especially the uh, number f uh, right here. Interest rate equals to five. So. It, and do not put 10 although it says 10 years but you should put a 20 okay 10 times 2 that's uh, 20 some annual periods this is the uh, present value okay that's the present value that's the current uh, 
uh, market price for bond and make sure this is a negative. Uh, if you pay this bond price, then you will receive the payments uh, and the future value as a positive uh, cash flows. Okay, so negative first, positive later. Your calculator has to go like this, okay, to make a balanced financial relationship. So make sure you put a negative sign here. And the payment is $45 every some annual period, and the face value or the future value is 1000 And then you uh, hit uh, alpha solve, you would get a 5 as the interest rate. And be careful, this 5 is uh, not the entire yield to maturity. Instead, it is a yield to maturity divided by 2. Okay, so the discount rate you applied here is actually uh, a half of yield to maturity, which is equal to 5. So what is your annual yield to maturity? Clearly, it is a 10. Okay, it is a 10. All right, uh, if this is a, a numerical solving question in your test, if you, your answer of yield to maturity is 5, well, that's uh, okay. You'll probably get, a, let's say, 90% of the total uh, points. But uh, if this is a multiple choice question, and your answer is a 5 uh, for yield to maturity instead of a 10, you lose all your points. Okay, just uh, one reminder here. All right, next is uh, the coupon bonds. Uh, now assume the yield to maturity is 11%, which is the fair price of the bond. So you have a coupon is right here, face value is uh, right there. Okay, uh, and this is a semi-annual bond. So uh, the time period is uh, from uh, um, January 2014 to December 2018. How many years in between? Some people say it's four years because you use 18 minus 14, that's uh, four. Uh, but actually, uh, you have a one more year, so you have a five years in total, because from January of a 14 to January of a 15, uh, sorry, to December of a 14, from January 14 to December of 14, you have a one solid year, okay? And then from December of 14 to December of 2018, you have another four years. So the total number of years is a four, if you uh, pay attention to the month, all right? And uh, then, um, since it's a semi-annual coupon payment, you should uh, put a 5.5% as an annual rate, okay? So that's what you get. So uh, five years between these two dates uh, times two, so that's a 10, and then 5.5 .5 is from you to maturity, and then uh, you solve for present value, and then uh, you put the uh, coupon rate, uh, coupon payments right there in dollar term, and then you put a future value as $1,000. Okay, that's how you solve it. All right. So um, just to use your calculator to verify that number. So what I did here is uh, uh, I have a five years in total. I use a five times two, all right? So that, and that give me two. And then I have 11% uh, for yield to maturity. And that rate will divide by two to adjust for the frequency, okay? And then I solve for a present value. The payment is 31.875, okay, for the coupon. I move back and then alpha solve. All right, so that's how you get the number. Okay, make sure you verify that number when you get home. All right, actually you are already home, I'm sorry, just to verify this number. Okay, the next one um, is uh, the inverse relationship between, oh, oops, the between the bond value and the the discount rate or the interest rate or yield to maturity, however you want to call it. Let me just be consistent. I call it yield to maturity. So as yield to maturity increases, the discount rate gets higher for the same amount of cash flow, uh, then the present value will be lower. Okay, so you see these coupon payments and the face value, they do not change at all. They are written in a contract, black and white, in a paper. So the cash flow do not change. If you put more discount rate, then you would end up with a less present value. All right, so uh, if the discount rate is equal to the coupon rate, well, as I have demonstrated, the bond price, the bond value would be at par. That means it's a $1,000 sharp, okay? When yield to maturity equals to coupon rate, it is, uh, um, uh, the bond value is $1,000. If yield to maturity is too low, 
which is below the coupon rate, uh, then the bond would be traded at a premium. That means the bond value would be over a thousand dollars. If the yield to maturity is greater than the coupon rate, then basically uh, the discount will consume all the coupon uh, payments uh, and also consume part of the face value, which is a thousand dollars, and the, that will leave the bond value less than a thousand. Okay, so uh, the bond trade that discount, we call that discount bond. All right, and remember the coupon rate uh, is a, a uh, is a, an annual rate. Okay. So if you are given a 8%, 9%, 10% coupon rate, it is always an annual rate, okay? And to get the payments, to get the coupon payments, you use uh, that annual rate times $1,000 face value, okay? And of course, divided by the frequency. That's how you get the uh, coupon payments for each period.